Hi everyone, welcome to an update of the electric chimney. Um, since last time, um, what I've fitted is some more stuff in the engine bay. So we have here our two DC-DC converters. We've got a throttle with a bit of a jerry rig throttle assembly. Made it out of some really thin steel, so the idea is that that's the weak link. So if anything was to go wrong, I won't damage the, uh, the pot box that goes into the Curtis controller and I won't damage the standard um, throttle. So uh, that's basically why I've done that. We've got space here for our battery, taken up by a brush at the moment. Um, started to put in the Curtis controller wiring. So we've got the 35 pin wiring just there, coiled up all the ones that I don't think I'm gonna be needing. And I've put in the ones all on the side of the car that I'm going to be using. We've got his wiring here for his charger. That's gonna be sitting just there, but I need to get all of this in, in and through just there before I can sit my charger into position because it's quite tight in here for room, as you can probably see. Um, again, we've got some bits to wire up. I've made my own little wiring diagram based on what I needed off of uh, off of everything. We've got a spyglass here ready to fit. Uh, we've got some things that came with the um, came from EV West with the motor and Curtis controller, etc. For like a a uh, relay here for the um, for the key to key to turn on system. Um, well, let's move inside the car. So if we move inside the car here, I've already started to bring through a lot of the wiring from the engine bay for the, um, just the standard things really. So what I've got here is I've got a couple of wires together to bring the gauge up and I'm gonna bring a 12 volt power into the cab just so I can take a pickup off of anything if I need to. So a lot of these things that I'm running, um, they need a 12 volt plus. So I'm just gonna be running the positive into the cab and taking positive off that it's really handy if i've got a relay wired in and i just need a quick positive and negative good somewhere then that's what i'm going to be using um i'm wiring this all into a, a nice big box and my bms is going to sit in there so i've already started putting in some of the wires from my bms um yeah it looks a bit of a, bit of a mess now but i've got quite a lot of wires in here inside is sort of finished i can't remember if this was done last time i've obviously got the passenger seat removed so i've got a bit of space to work but we've got the driver's seat in, Honda Civic Type R seats, quite comfy to be honest, probably the best part of a Honda. Um, <laughs> uh, moving forward, um, we've got some fighter pilot switches which is just going to sit in the dash just here and that's going to control everything that I uh, am running, such as um, my DC-DC converters, they'll all be controlled from in there, uh, my power steering pump, my motor, uh, motor cooling fan, my Curtis controller, cooler, chill plate, um, power steering, you've said that. Um, just just lots of things really, just so I've got custom control over everything. Um, means that I can A, isolate things if I need to work on them, and then if anything ever has a fault, I can still run the car without them things turned on, and I'll just literally flick that part off and run it run it without, without that piece running. Um, not only that, is that DC DC converters. I'm hoping a lot of the time I can just run one, save a bit of juice. Not a lot, but it makes a difference. Um, motor fan, uh, again, if I want to switch it out, do something different, turn it off, see what happens, see what the temperature goes up to. Just a bit of troubleshooting and a bit of um, bit of learning, really, just to see what things, what happens, and how much different things make, such as the um, chill plate for the motor controller. How much difference is it really going to make? I don't know, but having a switch there and to be able to turn it on and off and manually monitor the temperature, we'll be able to, I will be able to notice things like that. Uh, we're gonna have a forward and reverse switch inside the car as well, just because why not? It's part of the Curtis controller wiring when I was looking at it, so didn't uh, didn't realize it had some of these, these features. So I'm gonna be running some. Um, a lot of people have been saying about running a clutch on the motor that I'm running and I always wanted to run a clutch just because it was, I wanted that option to be able to change easily. Now, one feature of the Curtis controller is to have a shift button, which basically means that you will have something like a little momentary switch like this one. Press it, oh, it goes into the neutral mode it's called. So that means, because normally if you was to let off, if you were to put your clutch down on a, a AC motor, 
it will start to regen brake. So that means that the motor will try and basically try and stall. So when you put, lift your clutch back up, you're fighting yourself all the time. DC um, series wound DC motors tend to run clutchless and get away with it because as soon as you lift off the throttle, that motor is freewheeling. So when you take it out of gear and then put it in the next one, the synchros in the gearbox can actually spin up the motor and allow it to shift into that next category, next next gear selection. Uh, I'm trying to think how best to explain it really. So what the Kurtz controller does is you can ha instead of running a clutch, if you don't want to run a clutch, you can use something called a shift switch. Um, inside the parameters of the motor as well, inside the motor controller, you can actually configure different settings. So you can tell it that if you're uh, going X speed, I mean, you have like a set parameter that you can say you're in third and you want to go to fourth. It will then speed up the motor. So it just boom straight in. You're not, you're not relying on the synchros of the gearbox. It's like rev matching almost. And it has that facility to be able to do that. I'm not going to run anything like that. It seems way too complex just to get us going. So, but what I'm going to install is I'm going to install this shift switch. And then maybe further down the line, if I can remove my clutch, it might be something that I will consider doing if this works. So for the meantime, instead of installing it on the clutch, as uh, when you push your clutch, it pushes this button, a bit like my throttle assembly, I'm gonna be running it on a switch. Um, and I'm gonna put this on my gear stick. So, I'm just, just trying to get a good angle for you guys. Um, so I'm gonna have this somewhere mounted there, and then I will basically pull the switch, change gear, let go of the switch, push the switch, change gear, let go of the switch, switch, and there. Um, and I've actually also found that it just so happens that the pitch on this, instead of messing up this gear knob and trying to fit this big old switch inside it, it's a bit, uh, I'm gonna run uh, just so happens that the wheel studs, which I have lots of spares of, are 12 mil and 1.25 pitch, i.e. M12 super fine. So um, I'm gonna make my own little custom gear knob with said switch inside it, uh, and then we'll see what happens from there. Not much of an update, I know, but something, we're getting on with it. Um, watch this space, should be a couple of days of solid wiring, depends what motivation I get. See you later. So, we're uh, got a little bit of update, done some more wiring. I have chased all the wires through to the front from the BMS, the controller. They're all wired through, done a bit of uh, electrical tape, wiring loom management. Um, I've just dropped the charger in, just loose for now, just just, just loose. Um, so I can put the, the wire, because I've had to put the wires through for the controller, um, because believe it or not, I actually broke the little pins that go in the end of the tiny little like Molex sort of connectors. I broke them out of the charger, so I had to open all this up here and just wire directly into the charger. So uh, I didn't bother putting any connections on it. So I've just had to chase them through and then I had a little bit of slack. So I've just put that in there for now. Um, I've got a bit more cable management just to do down here, just to tidy all these up, put all these together, just so it's all, they're a bit protected, safer in numbers and all the rest of it. These are the wires obviously that I'm not using. I've got to plug this into my charger when I'm putting it in properly and then connect it up to my high voltage lines on my battery. Um, I've also got the some stuff like this to wire in, but these are the lines that are chased up for it. They're the switch lines. Obviously the 12 volt will go over there. And I'm gonna be taking off of the, the motor high voltage there for my DC converters, I think. Um, I think that'll keep everything nice and safe because then it's on a switched and fused, fused point. Um, I've got my spyglass here. wires are obviously chased into the front now so I've got my charger control wires up here just been putting trying to push as much stuff out of the way as I can do just to keep it all got my Molex connector here for 
my spyglass and that's just going to clip into the back of that um yeah so we're getting there slowly so it's the uk and as usual it's raining so i'm trapped inside my gymney here just uh, a bit more wiring so far what we've got is we've got most of the wires installed to be honest and you can see there i've done a bit yeah we've got our brake booster here we've got our motor fan we've got power steering a forwards and reverse switch jerry rigged a little shift button something like that just for now just to test stuff out make sure everything works all right um we have our well, uh, spyglass here from our Curtis controller. I'm thinking I'm just going to put that just there. Um, we've got our menu button. Just a little momentary switch for menu button, which I think there is going to be a very nice place to put it. Look, give that OEM sort of feel. Um, just got some wires here. These all want going to positive 12 volt. These all want going to negative 12 volts. I'm just doing them like that for now, and we're going to make them all up together. Uh, we've still got a lot of the BMS to do. I've just been chasing wires inside the box. I'm sure you saw that already. And another one for the 12 volt um, fuse and all these as well. Um, but yeah, we're getting there nice and nice and steady. <laughs> 